Uh, I believe we're live. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Hey, here we are. We're live. What's happening this week in Florida wrestling? We're back. Uh, great week of wrestling with all the duels happening. Uh, you know, we'll get into that. Uh, but uh, obviously, last night, sorry about uh, Devontae Davis just was on fire. Huh? <laughs> yeah, Devontae Smith. Yeah, I think uh, I just looked up Alabama and just scored again. <laughs> well, what happened? I, I mean, I woke up, I fell asleep when it was like just, it was almost over, you know? Honestly, I, I went to bed too. Um, I, I was writing a story last night, which we'll talk about. Um, I mean, listen, I, I, in case folks don't know, my, my main job uh, is focuses a lot around college football. I do three. In fact, I, right when we're done with this, I'm doing a podcast. I do Gators, UCF, National, done FSU. Uh, I saw I spent a lot of time on college football. My Saturdays are I work 14 hour days during nobody was beating Alabama this year. It was going to take a fluke and, and Ohio State was going to have to play even better than they did against Clemson. And they had a beat up quarterback and had some guys missing on defense. And even then, I don't think anybody's touching Alabama. That offense, I think any other any other year where we're not consumed with COVID and and everything that just made it so crazy we'd be talking about how this Alabama offense was probably the best ever suit up I mean three guys in the top five in the Heisman and you have a couple more uh up in there I mean they, they're just hats off to them hats off to Nick Saban I have no problem losing to them last night as an Ohio State fan we got the one we wanted or the one I wanted and and Dabo was at home eating pizza last night and I hope he's never in a championship game again and uh so anyway, so yes, lots of wrestling. <laughs> About to go hey, on a rant there. That was a uh, <laughs> that was a big win though with uh, at Clemson. I mean, they did get a, a good one there. And, uh, but yeah, I actually I went to bed uh, in the middle of the game. I it's a crazy week. I have people like already messaging me like, when are rankings going to come? I'm like, I don't know. Uh, Saturday, we we finally had the end of district duels. That was the last day that could happen. There were a lot across the state. Uh, I don't know how if people really realize how hard it is sometimes to get every uh, dis, uh, district dual result. I like to have them before the FHSA a prints them. I think I did. I, I looked today. They do have brackets up, but I had brackets up all along. I don't know when theirs went up, but my goal is to always be the, the place you come to first. And so Saturday was spent emailing and, and texting and checking Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all the different ways people reach me and, and Sunday was spent kind of shoring that up. And then yesterday was spent, you know, confirming hosts and what time they're going to host. It's the only place I pride myself, the only place that lists, you know, what time each region starts for, for Thursday night. Um, and I got a great story that I was working on. So yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a lot. I'm excited. I'd love the state duels concepts. I work extra hard on it to, to try and give it the best coverage it can, because I really want that to succeed. I remember when it was first being talked about, I mean, back when I first started covering the sport, you know, in the mid aughts, is that what they call the, the first aughts. decade of the mid aughts? Yeah. The mid aughts. Yeah. When I started covering <laughs> sport, there was talk of state duels. And I just, I grew up in Northeast Ohio. I love duels. I love the team concept of it. That's why you know, I, I, I just devoted some extra time to that and, and I'm excited for Thursday and, and glad that I was able to, to get all the results for it up this week, uh, but I was so tired last night and I couldn't even stay up for, to watch Ohio state play in the championship game. Yeah. I mean, especially when your team's in it, but yeah, I mean, get it right to it. There was a lot of, um, so now I uh, correct me if I'm wrong. We're through the, we're through the district part of this duel. Season. The district duels are done. We have champs and runner ups and all of them. We have brackets set. Uh, the even number district winner in, in all cases, but one are is the host this week. So uh, you, you combine like one and two, three and four, five and six, and you have the, the district champ and a runner up and they go there and compete. Uh, all, the, the four of them, uh, the, the district where uh, Bloomingdale would host, they're actually hosting that at Kissimmee Osceola. Uh, who is the winner of, of district five, but the, the even number districts host on Thursday, everything takes place Thursday night. And, and then the winners of the region semifinal there will go on to Osceola high school next Friday. So it's not a region championship on Thursday. It's, the, it's technically the region quarterfinals and the region semifinals and the winner of the four teams then 
moves on to Osceola. And then on that Friday is when the region championships take place, which is in the state's sense, the, the quarterfinals, if you will. But the, the region quarters and semis are on Thursday night all across the state, all on Thursday. Yeah, now um, I, I was at Lake Mary all day Saturday, so I didn't uh, I wasn't staying in tune with all the duels that was going on. I do know that um, I know Tenorock was was shorthanded and they they got a big win in the semifinals because I I heard that from from their coach uh, who I spoke to. But um, as far as like individuals, I mean I I heard there was there was a few. Uh, you had mentioned to me there was a big win at two eighty five and three A with. Uh, yeah, that was actually at Cradle uh, Cancer, and we'll get to that. I, I keep teasing my story. My story is about Orlando Freedom, and we talk about teams that are shorthanded, and just the season I think everybody is. I mean, even the top teams probably can tell you where, where they lost a kid or two because of this, or they don't have each week. And it's funny because another coach who's friends with – with the Bush brothers that are the coaches at Orlando freedom. And it was, he meant no disrespect by it, but he had sent me a message and saying, Oh, who do you think is going to win three, a nine. And he said, do you think it'd be St. Cloud or, or Boone? And I was like, I think you're forgetting about freedom because all oh, I know them, I know that they're really struggling to put a roster together, which, which I knew also, I mean, they graduated eight or nine starters from last year. It was just a real, it was a rebuilding year to start. Then they had kids that, did not come out because of COVID concerns. So on Saturday, they're wrestling uh, in, in their district tournament and needing to fill the lineup. David Bush went and grabbed two girls that are pretty good off the girls team and, and Kaylee Reese and Shelby Weaver. And they, they were in the lineup. And as luck has it, as storytelling has it in the final against St. Cloud, they were trailing 34, 28 and there were two matches left and it was, Kaylee and Shelby and they needed wins and they both got pins and, and won the district title for freedom. And, you know, and probably the, the most shocking one for them because they, they do have uh, what, like I said, what many schools are dealing with, but they do have roster holes and, and kids that they were expected to be there that aren't. Uh, and so I heard this and you tell me girls wrestlers do something great. I wanted to tell that story because it's, it's a, it's something that's dear to me. I have four daughters. I have one daughter who loves going to wrestling tournaments, as you saw. And so I, I spent yesterday afternoon talking to, to Shelby and Kaylee and, and last night and wrote a story on it. And I'm going to make it live when we're done here. Um, but I, I just I love the story of, of two girls who are really good. I mean, let's not let, let, be around the bush. I mean, yeah. Kaylee's ranked number one in my rankings. Shelby's ranked three and she probably could be two. Uh, she just hasn't faced the, the girl in front of her yet. And, uh, you know, and, and they come through and, and I love the camaraderie that's on the freedom team and, and how the boys and girls, you know, before this weekend, I knew how, how the, t the, the two teams combine and, and cheer each other on and show up at each other's tournaments and it's real family. And yeah, yeah, great girls too. Great, great girls, great girls, great girls team. Um, I've always enjoyed covering just the, the program for both of them. It's, it's a, it's a program without a feeder. You know, a lot of the kids that come in there uh, up until recently, probably the first time they get out on the mat and as a freshman, it's the first time they've wrestled. And some of those kids are still wrestling in college. I saw two of them wrestle this weekend for West Liberty and, and get wins, go Hilltoppers. That's my dad's alma mater up in West Virginia. Um, but I just, I, I like just the vibe you get there and, and how the girls cheer on the boys, the boys cheer on the girls and, and I knew that that Kaylee and Shelby were, were welcomed in. They didn't have that pressure of being girls. And it just made the story more fun to tell. And I'm looking forward to, to publishing that uh, this morning. Well, I mean, one thing is, I'm sure those boys have drilled with those girls, too. Oh, they all have. Yeah, they, and they've, they've, they've been pushed around group. by them. <laughs> they were probably like, yeah, come on, be yeah. on the team. Let's go. Let's do this. Yeah, you know, they I mean, they, and they and it's, you know, I think that's one of the, the things about the sport that I've enjoyed and, and hopefully it continues next year. I can't wait for girls wrestling to be sanctioned and, and be official. I really hoped it would be this year. Uh, but I, I think you see that throughout is, is there's a lot of respect uh, from the boys with the girls and, and obviously vice versa, but they don't feel like they're girls on the wrestling team. Like I don't think at any point over the weekend, and I asked them this, and so I know this, 
uh, Kaylee and Shelby thought, oh my God, we're girls. They're, they're worried that they have girls going out there. They were like, we're teammates. And th that kind of hurdle has been passed. And, and now it's just a matter of, hey, all I had to do was go out and win and, and do my best. I didn't have to worry about whether I was a girl going out there or, or anybody. I was just a teammate. And it's just, yeah, I think it's a, it's a neat aspect of the sport that we've seen grow as girls wrestling has grown. And maybe because it hasn't been sanctioned, so many have been in the room with the boys and, and drilling with each other and competing with each other that it's, there's not that stigma on it. Uh, there might well, be for some. Those, well, we see those two girls moving on to regions with the team. They say they're ready to wrestle in regions on Thursday. So uh, whether they do or not is to be seen, but they're both ready and, and looking forward to, to being there Obviously, and, and being ready for the call if it, if it comes. Yeah. And, you know, I spoke to um, uh, Reese's brother last week and uh, Hunter, who's back in town, and he said he's been spending some time with her and working with her. And it's been fun to be back in the room. And uh, just that whole atmosphere there is, is amazing what the bushes have built. And really, I mean, that, and that's my... I'm telling the story. I, I've been trying to tell more stories. I have like an entire document of stories I want to tell, but you know, when you spend 80 hours a week doing rankings, things fall behind. I was like, you know what? I'm just doing this. But I think it also tells why I like the state duel series so much is because it's such a team thing. And this was a story, not because a two beat a one or a three beat a two or, or whatever. This was two people that needed to win for the team to win. And they celebrated as a team and the team advance and a team trophy. And, and that's what you get in, in duels. And, and that's why I really enjoy covering it and look forward to keep covering it in the years to come. That was awesome. So, you know, staying with the duels, yes. guys, did, we, did we see, um, did we see everything kind of go chalk this week or did you see some teams that maybe surprised you? Uh, I mean, it's hard to, to be fair, most of the districts you can look at and, and tell who's going to be one, two. There's some where, where there's some depth and, and, you know, you're like, oh, three or four guys, three or four teams can make it out. For the most part, though, I mean, you're, you're seeing, I'm seeing the teams I thought would be there at least. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any truly shockers. I'm sure there are, and I'm not thinking off the top of my head, but you know, you look down, I'm looking down the line right now, just in, in 3A, all the champs make sense in 2A. I, I, okay, I'll tell you a shocker and, and Winter Springs over Harmony. And I don't know if it's a shocker because those are two great programs, but that easily goes the other way. There are five matches in that. I think we're like one point, one or two points difference that Winter Springs wins. You know, Harmony, Harmony on another day may win that. So not a shocker. Uh, and That's the one where we saw Aiden... Reichardt. The one that you, yeah, that you, you've heard Aiden Reichard beat uh, McNichols in that. I haven't seen score sheets from that. I've asked. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know if that's a shocker, but I thought that was significant uh, in knowing how close they are. And if they wrestle again tomorrow, start at a different right. weight, do the flip, you know, flip the coin a different way. Maybe it plays out different. Uh, but for the most part, it, I think it went pretty chalk for this one. Uh, I, the, the disappointing thing for me continues to be just, and, and this year I, I'm not going to, I can't really attack anybody this year because I, I know coaches at most schools are just struggling to have a lineup and, and just, you know, struggling to get on a map, but not everybody competes in these. And some of them only had two teams compete and it was the top two teams and, you know, they wrestle and the top two teams move on. But I, I like the ones where all eight teams show up or all seven teams are part of it. And we're, we're getting there. I think we were closer to that last year. And then this year just threw everything, you know, in a tizzy and, and there are teams that I know there's a lot of teams in Broward County that don't have coaches right now. There's some in, in Miami Dade that I've heard don't have coaches, some that don't they only have four or five kids. So I understand this year, uh, you know, teams not being able to field a lineup and not wanting to go to a, to a duels, but I look forward to next year when hopefully things get back on track and we can start having, to where it's not, maybe there are chances for, for shockers. And I'm not just looking at like, yeah, I picked that. I picked that. I picked that. And, and you know, have some, some teams jump in and, and, and make a difference. Tarpon Springs sticks out to me last year. I was, I was shocked when they won, won their district and, and advanced uh, out, out of Thursday. Um, you know, so, so maybe next year we'll have some more of those that, that kind of stand up, but I'm looking down the list now and, and most of the district champs kind of, kind of played the chalk. Yeah, real quick, uh, Brian Blocker, what's up, man? Thanks for watching. Uh, 
They put, yo, our district and region has solid girls. Freedom, St. Cloud, Cypress, yes. Creek, Heights. Throw in that DP is also in the district with their history. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and to be fair, Shelby in her match was wrestling a girl at 126 for the win. I mean, so there were St. Cloud wrestles girls, you know, <laughs> I, I, I think, my, and, and just say is usually though freedom is so deep that the girls are just wrestling in girls tournaments. And, and so I thought that was significant too, but yeah, definitely uh, district nine, that's my area, like technical area, you know, Orlando Sentinel coverage area. And, and they've been building girls wrestling there uh, quicker than, than almost anywhere else. Now, I, I saw Danny Walker posted that his regional is coming up and, and he posted all the teams and it looks like they're it's good. Be, what's that like the number th one, three, five and eight or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. You have uh, well, you have Winter Springs, as I as I stated in the one they'll face Auburndale, which is really having a resurgence. I, I, yeah, those are the stories I like. Also, again, I wish I had more time. Uh, to, to spend on this, but like Antonio Thomas, first year coach comes in there, former wrestler, Auburndale they didn't show up on anybody's radar in anything. I don't even know if they even competed in, in every district duels. They didn't have that big of a lineup. They go in to a six, they finish second, they get to advance, you know, and their reward is winter Springs. Uh, Lake Gibson opens with harmony and, and those teams will, will compete for the chance to, to go to Kissimmee and then they'll face either Tampa Jesuit or Springstead, uh, you know, so it's a rough road through that area of, of class two a, uh, but if I had to pick one of the tougher region quads this weekend, certainly the one at Lake Gibson would be in, in that top echelon of, is that of, the one uh, that you call the region of doom? I mean, it is the region of doom and it has been for quite some time. And it's the region of doom for, for state duels too. I mean, last year we had the same situation where you had Lake Gibson and Tampa Jesuit wrestling on, on Friday night at Kissimmee and the best duel of the weekend probably and Jesuit uh, got the win again you talk about you know where the weight starts and who wins the coin flip and and they went on to win the state title and you kind of knew when they did that they were going to win the state title uh, this year should be interesting in 2a because you do have Charlotte at the bot you know the other half of the bracket who's really good and and I'm looking forward to seeing how they can do they have Palmetto Ridge in their region you know for, for class 2a so it's not necessarily a straight shot from region from region two class two a to the state title but those that thursday night and that friday and then next friday night are, are really something to watch in two a is definitely doomish yeah i don't I mean, know if that's the, a word the cradle well the cradle cancer had some big matches i mean i was at i was at lake mary and i i saw some good stuff happening there with uh with their matches but um any surprise i mean i i know you talked about there's a kid Mason Powell, I think, in 3A, 285. Yeah. Doing some so, big things. I almost wrote you last week and said, you know what? We need to talk about 3A, 285. So Mason Powell is a wrestler at Wellington. Uh, he was a, a – I, I don't have his age in front of me. He was a sophomore or junior. He got injured. He was ranked eighth in the state uh, at the time that he was injured and and shut it down for the year. Came back this year, was was not listed as as someone who's – come back this year senior year not listed as someone at the beginning of the season that was going to compete I hadn't been able to confirm it he did come back uh and and is wrestling for them and so when I when I was able to confirm that I, I then looked at rankings from last year and he had wins over uh our at the time the the number one the number two the number four the number five guy from last year and I mean I, these rankings are not an exact science and as I tell everybody they're they're as worthless as the paper they're not printed on. Uh, they're meant to to entertain and, and bring some excitement in. And but you know, they mean nothing come March 6th this year. Uh, but I didn't know where to put him. And so I put him at one because he had wins over uh, those from last year. And I had some people ask me how that happened, how someone who wasn't ranked is now ranked number one. And and the explanation that, that I give, and I don't I don't not respond to anybody on rankings. Anybody that's watching this has ever contacted me. I back them up or at least try to. And if I'm wrong, I change them. But, you know, I answered all those questions. And then, so Mason Powell was number one last year. Then this weekend, someone who's been wrestling at Fort Pierce Central that I had not been made aware of, Matthew Weiner, is at the cradle cancer and dominates the, the, 
the uh, the fun there and beats Henry Jones, his teammate in the final, pins him in the second period. And Henry Jones was ranked fifth in the state. And so now I'm trying to figure out where Matthew Wiener goes and, and he'll probably be number one this week. He is uh, he's a move in from Connecticut where he was. It, I've heard very I've tried to find various things. He's either a state champ or a state runner up in Connecticut. He was a North New England region runner up or finalist. I mean, the kid comes down with with a uh, with a pedigree and a, and a resume. And I, and I spoke to, to to the coaching staff at Fort Pierce Central. I'm like, tell me how good he is. And they're like, we have the two best heavyweights in the room every week. And and, and they're probably not too far off on that. So so 3A 285 is is interesting. And, and I'm sure I'll have lots of emails this week like, hey, how did this happen? Uh, but at least this time I can maybe try to head off a few of those by folks watching this and can hear that explanation. But yeah, I mean, that's the, that's how it goes. And sometimes, you know, as, as we're, as we usually see at the turn of the year, some guys come back that hadn't been there and I got to fit them back into the lineup and, and, you know, they weren't on the roster through the holidays, but now they are. And and so I tried to work them back into it and, and kids, you're just finding out the, the, the life of a ranker, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it looked like there was a lot of wrestling this weekend yeah i mean i'm sure there is so much wrestling this weekend and and i was kind of shocked by it too because i think we had our when we talked uh last week i was like yeah this is state district duels this week and, and then when i was working results on saturday I was like, they just kept coming in there were just so many events and so many tournaments and and it's i'm excited and i've got lots to, to go through it usually seems to slow down this time of year, but it's actually picked up. Now you have Broward back competing too. And, and some other counties that were out are back and just so much action this past weekend across the state. And, and, and I need, I still need to dig into all of it. Um, but there's every corner of the state was covered with, with some sort of event this weekend. Yeah. And looking, going into this week, I don't, um, I, I guess it's mostly regional stuff because I don't see, yeah, the, the regions are on on Thursday. Um, and I haven't even drawn us. I haven't even looked ahead to the weekend. I do know St. Cloud uh, event was canceled last night. Uh, the, the Milton Warner uh, tournament, which I was really looking forward to. There were some some good teams coming there uh, because of contact tracing. Uh, that event has been canceled. I know Brooksville, Brooksville Central has a Friday night under the lights, which I'm hoping the weather provides a, a chance to do that. Um, but now we start to get into teams that a lot of the teams have, have blocked this time off to get ready for state duels, hoping that they'll be in it. Uh, and, and so you would think the other events slow down a bit. I mean, we're going to have a ton of action on Thursday night. Uh, and then there'll still be some stuff this weekend, but I was, I was impressed with how much took place this past weekend on the mats. And it's going to be fun to try and dig my way through all that over the next couple of days. Yeah. And it was great. And I mean, I heard cradle cancer was intense. I heard all the, the wrestling was intense. Again, I was in Lake Mary. We had, a, a, I mean, a lot of fun. I mean, all the, almost all the finals matches had top kids in them. So we got to see some, some really good wrestling there. I do like that you know, with the way the season's been going and everybody being off at district duels and just the, the alignment, you know, they typically have 34 teams or something. Every yeah. Year. Um, this year I didn't have that, but uh, kudos to Juan and his team over at Lake Mary. They did a great job. They put together a, uh, uh, like a round Robin and these kids yeah. all got to wrestle a bunch and uh, it was great to see and uh, good for the kids. Good for Juan and, and good for Lake Mary. So thank you for that. Yeah. yeah, it was good. It was good. And that's why I said to you before, because we were talking about it and talking about your son competing there. And, and the tournament champions is is one of in Central Florida, one of the, you know the blue bloods of tournaments. And it's always that that first or second weekend in January. And you know, this year you you just had uh, just not as many teams able to compete for various reasons. Some of a district duel, some just not able to travel. And and so it went from a two day event. They always make a big deal about the finals there too. And, and this was a, a one day event, but instead of making it a, a one day IBT, they gave kids a lot of mat time by making a round robin, still having a finals in each weight. And then it just, I think that was the right thing to do is because these kids deserve some mat time right now. So I was glad to see them make the, make the lemonade out of the lemons and, and have a good experience for you guys up there. 
Yeah, they did a great job, and I was glad to be a part of it. Um, we saw some big, big wins over at Cradle Cancer. I mean, a lot of, um, what it, I mean, a lot of the, the stuff I saw was Osceola versus Charlotte. There was a lot of, there was a, I mean, head there. I love the Cradle Cancer. I, I went last year. I wanted to go this year. My travel has been somewhat limited. Uh, you had Charlotte, you had Fort Pierce Central, you had Osceola, you had American Heritage, Delray Beach, you had obviously host Jensen Beach. Then you had some top wrestlers there. I mean, you also had Treasure Coast, Flagler, Palm Coast, Sebastian River. So you had some good wrestlers up there. And, and really, I'm looking at the, the, the finals that I have in front of me, three wrestlers that weren't ranked and two of them should be and will be this week. Matthew Weiner, as we already talked about, and, and Jacob Marasco at, at, at Martin County is a state placer from out of state that came in that was not on my radar in, until this weekend. And, and then Trevor Walsh is the other one uh, from Sebastian River who was – right outside my ranking. So, I mean, you had just ranked guys all over the place. You had probably the biggest win, maybe the biggest win of the weekend that I know of at this point, Patrick Nolan uh, tops Anderson heat from Osceola. He bumps up to one thirteen for, for the challenge and, and Nolan wins that five to two. Isaac church continues to look really good. He wrestled uh, Sebastian Melguizo really well in the semifinals at knockout and really got my attention. And, and he topped Russell Rabe at, at, from Fort Pierce Central 4-3 in the final there, uh, kind of showing his maturity at, and, and growth as a wrestler and just adding to, to 2A-132, which is already stacked and as it is. How about Haas? Haas jumped up to, to wrestle Austin, or did Austin go down? They, they didn't wrestle in the final, but but Haas jumped up in that, and but they, they did not wrestle in the final. It was listed as a forfeit. I don't know what happened there. If anybody knows, oh. uh, feel feel free to contact me. On that, you also had two number ones wrestle at 95. Uh, Mikey Tauschahar from American Heritage, top Nolan Edie, 3 2. Edie, I think this was his first appearance because Osceola, with their deep football run this year, he did not wrestle at knockout. I don't think he had wrestled before that. Really talented wrestler. He's my number one in 3A at 95, and they wrestled in the final to 3 2. Uh, that would have been a fun one to watch. Wish I had been there just for that one. Um, but yeah, that. Cradle Cancer, they, they they bring in some big guns and they didn't disappoint this weekend. A couple, of, like, like I told you, like Mary, um, you had the, the young Dominguez and Cone. Uh, you had um, the older Dominguez and Salerzano wrestled a great match. I, I could watch that one again. You had Gavin Wheeler and um, Alex. Uh, you had Camden and uh, I believe uh, with a kid from Buckholz. I'd have to look yeah. to remember. Um, Man, Buckholz, what a team they've got. And um, it's actually Buholz. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> I called it by my 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 high school principal had a very similar spelling to that, and it was Buckholz. And so for the longest time, that's why I called it. And then I found out it was called Buholz. Yeah, so there was some. Uh, there, there was some good stuff there. I, I want to point out real quick uh, also Keystone. You had uh, Paradon from University Christian uh, gets some revenge from the knockout and beats Vugman. 7-4, those guys really wrestling well. 106, you had Daquan King from Reigns uh, beating Hunter Harrington 4-1 in the final. On the second day, Hunter won their duels meeting on the Friday up there. Uh, so Fleming Island had, had some top competition up there. You brought in a, a handful of Georgia teams for there. We got a chance to kind of kind of really see some of the, the, the Fleming Island kids get out there. Joel Robinson, he didn't win, but he went 10-8 against Raynard Thomas from Reigns, who's who's one of the top guys there at 70. And and so that was – they had a ton of results from there that I have to go through because they had 20 teams there, and they had a bunch of duels on, on Friday, and then they came back on Saturday and did the IBT. So I wanted to make sure we talked about some of those kids. Jack Pyburn. Also, CFWA went out to Tyrant, came in second yes. at the high school level, and then – there was a lot of Florida kids, um, a lot of Florida kids up at Tyrant doing middle school and elementary that had some really good results. I'd have to go through and, and, and shout out their names. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you take a look at the Tyrant middle school and elementary school, um, there was some, there was some Florida kids there also that, that had some good wins. Um, I'm trying to look it up right now, but there's like 10 different Tyrants that happened um while you're while you're looking that up us uh, so we should bring up the the southwest florida christian academy scramble there's a lot of letters in that acronym 
you had Lemon Bay down there. You had Oasis, Rio Beach, and, and certainly lot, lots of guys that stand out that win there, but someone to watch, Jonathan Motor. Uh, first Baptist Naples young kid there wins 106. I, I'm guessing his sister Haley <laughs> was the girls' winner at 106, 112 down there. Uh, you had uh, some other guys there worth watching. Nicholas Clay from Oasis topped Lemon Bay's Justin Brady, Kai Shelton with the win, Mateo Villalobos with a win there for Benita Springs. So like I said there's stuff all over the place. I want to like it's so tough to make sure we get everybody that deserves a mention, but. Yeah, I can't. There's so many tyrants on here, and they put them all. But I did see. Um, I mean, I did see several kids, young kids out there that were wrestling tough. I mean, I. Um, I, I hate to start saying names. I know I'm going to miss a few, but congratulations <laughs> to all the young kids that went out there and uh, from Florida and, and and had some big wins. So, if you know their names, post them. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, other than that, so we got regions coming up. We don't regions on Thursday. Everything takes place Thursday night. Various start times between four and six across the state. Uh, I will have the bracket hopefully updated as much as I can that night, and and get as many score sheets and and box scores as I can. I haven't looked at track yet. I'm hoping a lot are on track. I'm sure some will be, uh, but we'll know. If you're looking forward to what. Uh, I mean, there, there's a lot, but I, I, I haven't mapped it out. I mean, obviously, I think Lake Gibson comes out of theirs, but I want to see how they, how Harmony and Winter Springs matches up against them. Uh, I know 1A down south has, has a good one. Uh, at Cardinal Gibbons, you'll have Jensen Beach, Cardinal Gibbons, and American Heritage, Delray Beach. You know, that should be really good to see who comes out of that one. And then the winner of that gets to likely face Somerset uh, in the, the class 1A4 region final. So so a tough one there. I'd like to be at Cardinal Gibbons uh, to see that one. Um, trying to think which, which else kind of really stood out. Uh, those are probably the ones that that uh, that I'd be most excited to, to see. Uh, Palm Harbor University in Manatee in the, in the quarterfinals uh, down at Riverdale with, with a chance to face Riverdale in, in the semis. They've David Vance, Eastlake is not participating on Thursday due to COVID uh, situations. But uh, Palm Harbor University may be the the best of the the, the first round of the quarterfinal matches that I can that I can think of coming into the weekend. But I, I'm excited to see who gets out. I'm excited to see if there's any any shocks. Like I could make a prediction of each one, and and I think I'd probably be pretty close to picking you know, all the region finalists, but there'll be a couple of shockers out there and, and that's what makes it fun. Yeah. And as far as the, uh, a few things that I've seen posted, um, we've got the girl States coming up. Uh, it's going to be at Osceola high school. Girl States has been, has been settled. It's the 20th and 21st, I believe. Um, just pulling it up here. I want to make sure I get all of the, the information correct. It has been, it is the end of district week. There will be some teams. I had not seen a district calendar yet for IBTs. A lot of them do take place on that Saturday, but it'll be that Saturday and Sunday. Uh, they have, it's open to all girls that live in Florida from sixth to 12th grade, all of the weight classes that, that I rank. Uh, possible heavyweight will be a scoring if there are enough um, girls that sign up for it. But the, the Girl State Tournament will be at Osceola this year, next year. Hopefully it's combined somewhere else as it becomes sanctioned. Uh, but there, it is set. Uh, it is the 20th and 21st of February uh, during the, that crazy time of all the district IBTs that week. Uh, in the past, they've done the girls the week before. Uh, could not fit it in that way this year. Um, but I, I expect some great action there and, and – uh, fun to go out there and see it happen absolutely and i mean i saw where uh, and thankful that it's at a place close to us so absolutely. we, we can go Seminole watch county, <laughs> Seminole county wrestling club has been putting on some matches for girls on on wednesday nights and i know they've been working on some stuff with with kerwin there on on moving forward to get the girls wrestling um, but we did see for the young kids uh boys and girls we saw an aau coming up the 24th over at osceola uh, so get your young kids in there, get them on the mat. They'll be able to wrestle a bunch. And then I just saw where D1 Wrestling Academy announced, um, I think it's the 30, 
first. It's a Sunday. It's the Sunday of Moskowitz. Okay. Um, they're doing a K through eight, I believe, down there. So if you have any youth kids out there, that's kind of the stuff that I've seen popping up. Take advantage of it. If I'm if I'm forgetting some, please let us know. Post it on my page. Post it on his page. Post it in our group. DM us. We'll share it. Um, I'm not forgetting you. I just don't know what's happening. <laughs> so uh, uh, let me know out there. And but yeah, there's plenty of wrestling out there, and I'm sure all the local clubs are going to probably announce something, whether it's a a rumble or it's a open mat or it's whatever. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of that coming up this weekend. Um, so. Yeah. But yeah. Thursday night is, is the big one. You, you win in those, those quads, you advance. Interesting thing. Also, according to FHSAA, uh, a little bit of a time change this year for state duels in the past. The Friday is, is similar. You have one, a two, a three, a, they split them out about three hours between each one. Uh, but on Saturday, all three semifinals at the same time at 10 a.m. at Kissimmee Osceola and the finals at one o'clock. And in years past, they've done semis at like nine, 11 and one. And then we've had to sit around for the finals to start at six. Uh, but this year, all the semis at the same time, three semis on six mats. And then they will quickly tear those three mats down, set up the three finals matches, mats for the, the finals. And then you'll have uh, the finals at one o'clock, which is fantastic for me because I have four daughters starring in Frozen that weekend in community <laughs> theater. My daughter is making her debut Friday night. I'll actually miss some of the state duels, but I'll be back uh, from the state duels finals in time to to see her second performance on Saturday night. Oh, Steve Hall just posted that he's going to have a big announcement for March 12th, uh, for okay. March 13th, 14th coming. It's a USAW event, so we look forward to hearing about that. Um, thanks, Steve Hall. Yes. Uh, other than that, um, hey, get out there, watch some wrestling, support Florida wrestling, support national wrestling, support. Uh, there's a lot of Florida kids now that are competing on the mats in college. We've seen college. Uh, well, we know the NAI has been going on, so we've seen the boys and girls on the mats there, but NCAA has been opened up, and we've seen yeah. a lot of our, our Florida, Florida boys there. So, um, hey. Uh, Which I would love to follow. I, and just, I, yeah. I need – like two extra days every week if we can figure that out somehow <laughs> yeah we'll just make a nine day week for you yeah i just have a nine day week i see like i just need like 50 hours more a week to, to get everything done that i want to do yeah that's not kind too of, much to ask kind of sucks no more college football i i mean i'm glad because i have and now i can devote more time to this i'll <laughs> i'll get my final podcast out of the way today on that and then i can take a break from college football it's it's it'll be back but yeah i'm ready for that to be done Nice. All right, Florida. Take it easy. Yes. See you.